Hi. I'm David Hoffman. I'm the principal at Island Park Elementary School. On behalf of the elementary school administrators, welcome back to school. We hope you and your family have had a safe, healthy, and wonderful summer. The purpose of this short video is to address some of the COVID-related questions you may be asking. Today is August 13th, 2021, and the information we're gonna to present today is based on health department information. And of course, it's subject to change in response to COVID spreading or reduction in our communities. So always check with the COVID links on the district website for the most current and updated information. The governor and superintendent of public schools have mandated that school districts plan to provide full-time in-person education for all of our students with the following required mitigation measures that we're gonna address this morning. Universal face coverings, physical distancing considerations, improving ventilation, hand washing and respiratory etiquette, cleaning and disinfecting and staying at home when a child is sick. So with that in mind, I'm going to pass the baton to Megan Isaacson, who's gonna tell you a little bit about mask wearing this year. Hello, Mercer Island community. Megan Isaacson, a new incoming principal at West Mercer Elementary. This is a little bit inf of information about masks. So all school personnel, volunteers and visitors and students must wear cloth face coverings or an acceptable alternative. For example, a surgical mask or a clear face shield with a drape at school when indoors in accordance with the Secretary of Health's mask order. On school buses, passengers and drivers are always required to wear a mask. Some general information is a cloth face covering is anything that completely covers the mouth and nose and fits securely on the sides of the face and is under the chin, which you will see some of my colleagues doing right now. It should be made of two or more layers of tightly woven fabric with ties or straps that go around a person's head or behind their ears. You can also have a face shield with a drape, which I don't have with me today, that can be used um, by people with any sort of developmental, behavioral, or medical conditions that prevent them from wearing a face covering. A face shield with a drape may also be used by children with similar conditions in childcare, day camp, and K-12 settings. So face coverings, co coverings or masks with ear loops are preferred over the ones that tie around the neck or behind the head due just to physical activity and to reduce the risk of injury. Schools, uh, all of our schools will provide our face coverings or masks as appropriate for staff and students who do not have them. So there's our update on masks. Take it away, Principal Christensen. All right, thank you, Megan. Um, hello everybody, Principal Christensen from Lake Ridge here. I'm gonna to talk to you just briefly about some um, considerations and mitigations that we will actually be continuing from last, last school year. So first, in our classrooms, we will be maintaining physical distancing of three feet or more between students whenever it's uh, possible and feasible to do so. Uh, we will continue our enhanced and frequent hand washing practices. By enhanced, we mean teaching and monitoring how long, how well, how frequently students are washing their hands and using hand sanitizer often and having it readily available for students and staff. Uh, we'll also continue to teach and monitor good uh, respiratory etiquette with practices such as sneezing into your elbow and or washing your hands after you sneeze or cough and such. We will continue to not allow sharing of food throughout the day and throughout the building. Our building ventilation systems and practices will continue to be enhanced and maximized. Essentially, we're trying to uh, make the inside spaces as similar to outside as we possibly can be, because we know that's a little bit safer. So keep that in mind as the weather gets cooler than today, for sure, um, gets colder and send kids with appropriate um, attire for colder buildings and colding, colder weather. And finally, uh, we're, we'll continue to use protocols and procedures for student movement throughout the building, such as hallway passing uh, protocols, lining up protocols, as much as is um, functionally possible throughout the day. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to our new and terrific colleague, Tara, Tara Ramsey. <laughs> Hi, I want to talk to you about lunch and recess. Students will not wear masks while eating lunch or having snacks. We will teach students where and how to hygienically store their masks. 
Hand washing or hand sanitizer will be available before and after eating. Per DOH guidelines, physical distancing and other mitigation measures will be in place during lunch, including maximizing distance as much as possible and reasonable for lunches to occur. In addition, see-through tabletop physical barriers will be used between students to provide another layer of mitigation while still allowing students to see and speak to their peers. Students will be encouraged to use lunch as a time to eat and fuel their bodies. When individual students are done eating, they will don their face masks again. Lunch may be indoors and at certain schools outside weather permitting. As in any school year, there will be designated pathways by which students enter and exit eating areas. Eating areas will be cleaned between lunches. Our goal is to facilitate quick access to school bought lunches. Now on to from Ms. Jill Kelly. Thank you, Tara. I am gonna be speaking today about recess. That's probably the hottest topic our students are curious about. So the good news is we are going back to three recesses each day. So please let your students know that that's coming back and we're really excited about it. The good news is we don't need to cohort. And that is gonna offer students a lot more opportunity to be able to go and play with kids in, their different grade, in the different grade levels and in different classes. And I know the kids are excited about that. The final thing to remember is um, this is still being discussed for our students at all levels. And what the, the guidance says is students may remove face coverings when they are outside. That's something that we're gonna to continue to discuss as a, as a district. And we will begin giving you more information about that as that final decision has been made. But students, of course, are welcome to wear a, a face mask outside if they'd like, uh, but that more guidance on that will be coming. So without further ado, I'm going to go on to introduce Miss Amy Batliner Gillette. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Amy Batliner Gillette. I'm the principal at Northwood Elementary. And I've just got a couple of extra points about other health considerations at play as we begin school this year. Um, so as we start school, per our revised guidance, we no longer will be requiring daily health attestations for staff or for students. Um, so we do still ask that you pay attention to whether your child is uh, healthy and well enough to go to school and make those wise decisions with the whole community in mind. Our schools do have health and safety plans guided by the Department of Health so that we have a plan to respond to illness or suspected illness and to respond if students or staff to play, display COVID-19 like symptoms. As a full district, we have a response and communication plan in place that includes communication with staff, families, and um, the school district and the lo local health authorities. Please note that within this plan, should we have to respond to a COVID-19 um, case within the school, we continue to have the obligation to protect the privacy of our students and our staff while we follow that guidance um, and respond to any such event. Please remember to, to keep students home who have fevers or have had a fever in the last 24 hours, um, who don't feel well, who, who uh, demonstrate any kinds of illness, uh, flu-like or COVID-like illness or any other illness. Um, that's always just good practice, but it's extra important during these times. Um, students will be sent home if they arrive at school sick or if they become ill um, during the course of the school day. So as you complete your RSV pre-process for the beginning of the year, please make sure we have correct contact information both for the child's parents or guardians and for any emergency contacts um, should an illness occur. And as always, we remind you that it's good practice to seek medical advice or an evaluation um, when a child is exhibiting flu-like symptoms. So as an elementary leadership team, we want to thank you for doing your part to help keep our school and our broader Mercer Island community healthy and safe. And we look forward to starting school with your kids in just a couple of short weeks. Take care. <laughs> 